Hello, BookTube. Um, this is a book chat about Post Captain, a novel, the second novel in uh, Patrick O'Brien's Aubrey Matterin series. It's number two out of 20. Uh, it was first published in 1972, and uh, the setting is in the Napoleonic War era. And I mentioned in uh, book, the book chat for the first volume that... Um, Aubrey uh, uh, is now now a captain, and Matterin had met in Port Mahone, um, and they'd had some luck, which is in Menorca, the Mediterranean. They'd had some luck, and through skill, and you know, luck, skill, and uh, daring do, uh, to capture a prize, um, and. This volume opens with the Peace of Amiens, and the war's over. So, basically, Captain Aubrey and uh, his buddy, the Irish surgeon and naturalist, and uh, a little more, we find out, Stephen Matterin, decide to rent this big country estate uh, with some of their winnings, some of their prize. And they're on the hunt. They're on the... They're doing the fox hunts, the pretty ladies in the neighborhood and the families, and it's it's a good time. So that that emphasizes that while these are nautical fiction of the first order, um, they also have elements of historical novels that aren't just at sea. Um, my my love of nautical fiction started with the the Hornblower. C.S. Forrester novels and Douglas Riemann and his Alexander Kent novels and Politho and all that. This is a little different. It reads a little different. Um, so, unfortunately, the prize agent uh, absconds with Aubrey and a whole bunch of other folks' money. And... Um, the courts find out that the two merchant ships he had captured were technically from a neutral man. All sorts of bad things happen. So now he's in debt. And back in those days, uh, a guy like Aubrey or anybody who had a ton of debt and couldn't pay it would go to jail. So him and <clears throat> his uh, sidekick and friend and uh, sometimes protector, <laughs> Stephen Matterin, um, decide that they're going to go to the, um, let's see here, they go to the Pyrenees, over the Pyrenees, and then they go to Matterin's property in Spain. Um, because where they were in France, where they were hiding, all of a sudden the war's breaking out again, and they're English guys, or an Irish and an English guy, and it's not going to be pretty. So it's one of the funniest parts of the book. It's hilarious. And... Some of you, Aubrey has to dress up, and it's pretty funny. And it's not what you think. And I laughed the whole time. Eventually, Aubrey's given command of an experimental ship called the Polycrest. It's a disastrous thing. It doesn't do anything right. And then, um, through great uh, bravery, he uh, is told to uh, raid a port. He does so. He loses... Um, the uh, Polycrest and uh, takes control of a much better vessel and uh, he gets to England he's promoted to post captain he's assigned to a ship called the HMS Lively which is a wonderful ship and uh, well, the love interest is wrapped up and um, the Lively's involved in a mission to intercept the Spanish and uh Aubrey finally realizes Maturin's a little more than he seems to be, and I'm, I won't give that away. But um, once again with these, there's relationships, there's period, interest in the greater culture, not just nautical. Um, I, again, I use the Sea of Words, which is a lexicon by Dean King, um, John Hattendorf and Jay Worth Estes. This is mine's in the second edition. 
so it includes more of the volumes. So it'll tell you ship types, uh, commands on ship, um, some of the political background. Right here is articles of war that would control the. Um, so, patechia, a small red or purple spot on the skin caused by a minute hemorrhage, uh, occurring with scurvy and certain fevers. So a lot of medical stuff. They're very interesting. And then I also use this Harbors and High Seas, which is an Atlas and Geographical Guide to Aubrey Matter and Novels of Patrick O'Brien, second edition. Uh, Dean King with John B. Hattendorf, and I've got it marked here. So this would have been um, chapter two, because it's book two, is uh, Post Captain. England, the Continent, and the North Atlantic Showdown. So you have a map there. And then two battles of the balloon with the balloon. Right there. Well, it gives you a little background of the story. So for places, he has Bath, which is the, the, the uh, place where they had the uh, house. The Bay of Biscay, Cadiz, Chatham. Uh, the Downs, North and South. So a view of a castle. This here. Um, this, uh, the Liberties of the Savoy, Goodwin Sands, English Channel, the Nor. So you, you learn a lot. Um, this is very handy. This uh, handy, excuse me. This is the chart of Plymouth Sound. A period chart. So um, I very again cannot recommend this highly enough. They're very, very detailed. Nicely paced adventure historical novels. Um, you're not going to get Horatio Hornblower here. You're not going to get some of those the sea stories, uh, Marriott, those types of guys. Um, and if that's what you're expecting, you, you'd be disappointed. But you are going to get a very accurate, well thought out, researched adventure at sea and on land with political intrigue um, a pretty accurate setting for the time for everything that's going on and for where you are and just wonderful characters um, the sisters and, and the uh, the folks that Aubrey and Madeline and have their love interests with they're very interesting the families are interesting and uh, even the characters at the Admiralty uh, who control so much of life. And it's all, it's all well worth it. I'm, I'm glad I'm reading them. I love these editions, obviously, the, the Folio Society. I and mean, I can see what we have for uh, some of the um, pictures. Oh, here's the end papers. Um, I draw a pistol. See if we get some. Uh, that's life in an English country house. Fox hunting down below. So the, uh, the Folio Society editions are a real treat, and the, the stories are a real treat. Um, this is the second one of these little book chats I've done. Um, they will come slow and steady because I'm not going to to read through these real fast. I'm going to just enjoy them and read them as the fancy strikes. So the next one will be the, uh, I believe it's the HMS Surprise. And I'm looking forward to it. And uh, thank you, BookTube.